Uh, Matty Lockin joins us, assistant coach Matt. Appreciate your time. Good morning, guys. Hey now, Matty, what? Yeah, you know, this is the I think the element that Port Adelaide supporters go. How come this happens? Yeah, there, there's games we're expected to win, can't get over the line. Then there's oh, playing the top team. They've uh, only one lost one game for the whole year, and for me, really did dominate the contest. Yeah, look, it was um, a fantastic effort by our boys. Um, as you said, at times it can footy can be one of those sports that is a little bit frustrating. And um, you're right, we do win, or well, everyone wins games that you probably shouldn't, and um, lose games that you probably should. So look, I, I woke up and I know everyone else woke up feeling pretty good this morning, and um, yeah, it was a fantastic effort by the boys. But it was only 11 points in the end, but it just didn't feel like that. It felt like Port Adelaide had control for most of the evening. I think a, a patch in the beginning up to about the 15-minute mark of the second quarter, Geelong sort of hit back a bit there, but it just felt like we were in front further. Yeah, it certainly did, Timmy. It um, felt like we were in control the whole night, and um, you know, to only win by 11 points... It's probably a testament to to Geelong. They're they're a really good side and they're hard to really um, get on top on, especially on the scoreboard. So um, we'll take it though, whether it was one point or whether it was sixty, um, to be able to beat, you know, probably the best side in the competition at the moment is, um, yeah, certainly pleasing and and sets up the back end of our year. If you could bottle the emotion of a sacked coach or when you swing the axe, Matt, you'd go through undefeated because I don't know what it is <laughs> mentally with teams when these things happen, but it's amazing how often teams get up. Yeah, uh, yeah, certainly. Uh, look, it was a really hard week, for, especially for Kenny, because um, we, we made some changes with some of our senior guys and um, and also brought some senior experience back into our side. So, look, we didn't focus on it a hell of a lot as a... Uh, um, playing group and a coaching staff, but it would have had a bit of a toll on the boys um, to be able to have, you know, your captain of your footy club, Charlie Dixon and, and Brad Eber, and also Jolly Garner as well. He's one of those um, really likeable young men. He's in, he was in his second second game on the uh, last night, and um, he brings that toughness back into our team. And then to have a couple of guys go out of the side um, as well. It was, it was an emotional week, but, um, yeah, to be able to get the result we're after was really pleasing and, um, yeah, really happy for the football club to be able to get a good result. Hey, Matthew, on that point, I think people from the outside, they can easily throw an axe and, you know, cut a person and say, get that one out and that one in and all the rest of it. Coaches build relationships with players because you have to. And to get yeah. the best out of them, you have to build relationships. And when you are saying to them, listen, um, you're not playing this week, you're you're scouring that relationship to a point. Yeah, it's the worst part of of a coach's job. Um, you know, oh, Matty, it, I used to say on Thursday night yeah. when you used to have to talk to players and tell them they're not in. I said it felt like uh, you're breaking up with your girlfriend, but you were breaking up maybe with three or four of them <laughs> that night. No, I reckon you used to say to us, Timmy, that you're in my side. Everyone else wanted you out. So. <laughs> I learned that off Jack. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a way around it. But I oh, look. It's a credit to our playing group that, um, and we probably talk about Westy and um, and Paddy more than the other two that went out just because of their experience and uh, where they are in their careers. But both of those guys were fantastic. Um, you know, they were first and first people in the change rooms after the game last night, and and their understanding that they perhaps haven't been in the best form um, that they would have liked. So um, the non-selected guys trained yesterday morning, and they trained really well, and. Um, you know, it's a credit to those two guys, but also our playing group that we know that there's some guys in really good form underneath. And um, if you're not playing to the level that you want to play at AFL level, they'll certainly um, you certainly got to make those changes. So it wasn't a huge issue. Um, it was probably more of an issue for for everyone else and people on the outside. Yeah, Matty, yourself, you played just about every position on the ground. I don't think I rucked you, but I reckon I had you on every other spot on the ground. Um, what is it with ruckmen? that they just want to be the ruckman and they just want to do it all day long. It's an amazing thing, isn't it? Midfielders will change on and off and, you know, and rotate and all the rest of it, but ruckmen just love staying in the middle all day. Yeah, they're a different breed, ruckman. We all know that. Um, <laughs> but certainly I think that challenge of being competitive and, um, you know, at the coaching group, we went in at the start of the year to have a plan to play two ruckmen and, um, I know Paddy wasn't in last night, but Dougal Howard did a really good job packing up Scotty. So um, I don't think we'll change that approach. And um, you know, whether it's Paddy doing 30, 
40 percent in the ruck, um, or whether it's Dougal or whether it's Charlie, um, we'll certainly have someone to support our, our number one ruckman. And at the moment, that's Scotty, and he was fantastic last night. He did a great job. And um, you know, on Paddy's point of view, I think you know, I'm sure Paddy will get back into the side as soon as he can and and support um, support Scotty in that role. I thought uh, the two greys, not related, Sam and uh, Robert, I thought they were both really good. I mean, Sammy just did such a great effort at, uh, you know, a little bit of time on ball, not much, but just to get 21 touches and just be so instrumental in some of the hard ball gets he got. And then Robbie Gray, I, I think breaking his hand was a blessing. He needed that month off to get that body right, get all those niggles out of the way, and he looked uh, back to his magical best. Oh, how good is he to watch? Oh, um, yeah, he's brilliant. You know. I sit on the bench and just uh, marvel at watching Robbie Gray play. He's a, um, a superstar of the competition, and um, I, I've got a bit of a soft spot for Sammy Gray, being a you know Maggie's junior coming through and sort of watching his uh, career grow. And I don't think people understand how hard Sam Gray works. Um, yep. he, he's a small forward that gets up and down the ground, and um, they both had huge games last night. And Dan Houston in the middle. It's I'm watching his work because. Um... I think he's underestimated some of the little deft handballs he's doing and some of the clearance work he's able to do in close is really impressive. We all know he's a good kick, but that stuff in close, I reckon some people are missing. Yeah, certainly. Um, Whether you've got him at half back or whether you've got him on a wing or inside, um, his ball use and his decision making is certainly his strengths. And last night, his ability just to be able to get you're right, Timmy, just that little handball out and, and put someone out into the open was, was really important for us. And he played a little bit sore last night too, which is um, a credit to the guy. And, and his maturity for such a young man is um, really important for us. Everyone walk a bit taller, Matt, when uh, Charlie Dixon's in town. You wouldn't want to race him to the buffet. He just crashes and <laughs> get out of my way, I'm coming through. <laughs> Oh, look, I couldn't speak um, any more highly of Charlie, and he's such an important person, um, not only on field but also off field as well. And um, you know, I saw him firsthand the last couple of weeks um, at Magpies level, and just his ability to come and compete and enjoy the environment and be back playing with such a lift, lift for our playing group. And again, last night the boys just um, stand tall at knowing that Charlie Dixon's next to him and. You know, we've got such a mix up in that forward line, uh, which is exciting. You've got the young Zach Butters and Connor Rosie and Kane Farrell that bring that excitement, and um, they certainly grew last night with Big Charlie standing up there. Next week's a big week. Uh, to back it up and beat the Bulldogs at home again is really important. Now, you and I have got a really big day. We've got to go down to Prospect, make sure the Magpies beat the Roosters there. Then do you need a lift to the ground after that? And we... <laughs> Then we do the game at uh, Adelaide Oval and uh, and beat the Bulldogs. Oh, mate, it's going to be a big day. Um, as you said, it's, uh, oh, look, it's probably the Bulldogs are one of those sides that when they're on, they're really hard to beat. And um, you know, uh, we're going to have to be on our game again to be able to beat them next Saturday night. And um, and North Adelaide are the reigning premiers, so to be able to go to Prospect and and get a good result for them. Um, the Maggies have obviously won their last two games, but we've still dropped down. I think we've gone down to seventh on the ladder. So uh, it's a really tight season, and, and that's why we all love footy so much. It's exciting, and um, you've got to be on your game every week to be able to get the result you're after. Did you have to put the Adelaide Oval in the GPS last night, Matt, just to remember where you are? been a while since you've been <laughs> a month. month. Yeah. It's been a big month. It's been a huge month. Obviously down in Tassie, then to China, and then over to Perth, and then... Back to Adelaide Oval, it's nice to have a couple of home games and um, actually got the day off today, you'd, which is kind of nice with your sun out. You'd be gold status, mate, on the frigging flyers, That's mate. That's right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, we, yeah, we've had plenty of miles the last month or so. Very nice. Well, uh, well done on the win, Matt. Uh, I'm no doubt the inner circle will be delighted because I know the outer circle, and particularly uh, the men directly across me, very happy <laughs> after last night's <laughs> results. So well done. Good luck against the Bulldogs and enjoy what is probably a rare day off, I guess. No, thanks very much, guys. Enjoy the enjoy your day. Good work. See you, Matty. Matthew Lockham from Port Adelaide.